And so let's start with tomorrow's rugby. And Ireland have a remarkable record in recent years against France. Can it be continued in Paris tomorrow with the French under their new coach, Guy Noves? But joining Paul Wallace and Neil Francis today, we have a very special guest, courtesy of PSAacademies.com. Philippe Saint-André, thank you very much for joining us in Dublin today. Yeah, good afternoon. I said Ireland have a remarkable record. You had a very good record as a player for France against Ireland, but as coach, Ireland was definitely a difficult team for you as a French coach, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly. I, I think I played seven times. I won seven times coaching, uh, five times, two draw and uh, three lost. So very good record for Ireland. But to be honest, uh, in uh, in the World Cup, uh, Ireland deserved to, to beat us. We, they were much better than us on, on the day. You've just preempted the question I was going to ask you about that particular day because now that you can look back at it, what are your memories of the occasion of that day in Wales and of the match? To be honest, we we were quite confident uh, before the game. We, we had won five games consecutively. Uh, we were already qualified. We had 10 days of recovery before, before this game. But to be honest, we didn't feel that we play in Cardiff. We feel more than we play in Dublin. It was, uh, the atmosphere was amazing. And uh, what surprised us, it's that uh, the Irish team was um, very clever on the day. They, they beat us about our strengths. They, they steal us a lot of ball in line out. Uh, we were struggling in scrums and it was our good, big strength. And, uh, and in, the, in the ruck, in the contact area, we, we, lose, we, we lost the battle. So Ireland on this day was, was better than us about our strengths and you know when uh, when you have a strength in your team and you are second on this after it's difficult and after uh, the game plan of Ireland was very good they keep the ball we didn't have any ball during uh, so we stay in the game during 68 69 minutes but when you don't have any things to it it's difficult but even when Ireland lost players like Paul O'Connell at half time when he was injured Peter O'Mahony went off in the second half why did France not take advantage of the loss of such important Irish players? Yeah, yeah, yes, it's it's true because half time uh, you lost three three of your key players, and the, the score was just nine six, so we were just behind. And to be honest, uh, in the changing room, the, the confidence was was high. You know, we had a, a good bench, and uh, it was just to try to be. You know, uh, more uh, more precise in in our set piece because we needed the ball you know because in 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 professional rugby and in the new area you can't be in defense uh, seventy percent or eighty percent of the game and I have still you know image in my head sometimes you know I, it's it's like a nightmare you know I, I wake up during the the night but I I remember two two line out very important in the. 22 meters of of Ireland in 30 meters of Ireland, or we can impose our game, can touch the ball, and and the the two line out uh, Ireland still has the ball, and I think they, on the day they they were more, more reactive than us, and they were better, better and more clever. But did that game, in some respects, almost ruin the rest of the World Cup for both Ireland and France, in that it took so much physically and emotionally out of the players that Ireland suffered the following week against Argentina, and you definitely suffered against New Zealand when you lost 62-13. Yeah, but I think, to be honest, it was like, uh, like a quarter final before, you know, the physicality of the game. And during 60 minutes, it was it was very very physical. The contact area was was ruthless, and uh, and uh, the Irish team you had a lot of injury, but us, you know, we have a lot of guys was completely, uh, I will say, broken for two or three days. It was very hard for our player to recover. And because also we uh, we lost our quarter final against against New Zealand was very short. We play the Sunday and it was uh, the quarter final was uh, Saturday and half of the players didn't recover because it was so big game and so intensity. And when you look, all the team have a big game on the last pool stage. They were struggling in quarter final, like Argentina have. A, Tough game in the beginning, but they rest nearly 70% of their players on the last pool stage. 
And I think this was a huge, huge advantage for, for Argentina. Yeah, so the timing of the Ireland-France game at the end of the pool was very, very unfortunate for both teams. We'll go to Neil Francis and Paul Wallace in a moment, but I want to stay with you, Philippe Saint-André, because as the French coach for the last four years, Ireland have won the last two Six Nations meetings. There were two draws. There has a perception has developed here in Ireland that French national team is struggling badly because French club teams are buying in too many players from overseas and are stopping the development of French players. Is that theory that we have in Ireland one that you would subscribe to? I think you read my book, do you know, because I just <laughs> did a book. Anyway, he came last week and, uh, and I say that uh, our French league at the moment kill the French rugby. Because first, um, we have a lot of overseas players on the big team like Toulon, the best team. You have three French players in the starting 15 maximum. And we have two problems in the. So it's a lot of overseas, overseas players. Our best player after the French players, the 30 best players, play 40 games here. So they start end of July by the friendly games and they finish end of June by the tour with the French team. And in rugby, in modern rugby, you can't play 11 months here. And the second problem is because it's, the league is so competitive and it's so much money. Our young players from 19 to 25, they don't play anymore or they have uh, 10 minutes of games. They play four or five games a year. So we have a double problem. Our best 29, 30 players play too much rugby. And our young players don't develop anymore. You know me, I was lucky, 17 years old, I played first division uh, and I, I was first choice each week. And me, during four years of French coach, I was picking guys who was not in the starting 15 in their club. So this is quite, uh, it's quite strange and rare. And I tell you, I just tell you the truth. You know? But it's part of that, your own fault, in that you were in Toulon before you took the French job. So in Toulon, you were buying in foreign superstars from the Galacticos, from the Southern Hemisphere. Even in your previous jobs in to, England, uh, you were bringing in players that perhaps were developing or hurting the development of the English team by bringing to, in so many be, foreigners. To be honest, I, I am not agree with you because when I, when I won the league with Sale, 70% of the team was English, you know, Charlie Roxon, uh, Wigglesworth, uh, Ben Foden started 17 with me, uh, winger, fullback. It was just a, a balance, Jason Robinson. We needed a little bit much, much more power and I bring Sébastien Bruno, Sébastien Chabal and, and, and Lobe. But I bring just three or four players after I keep the English, uh, the English player. And when I go to France, uh, I was with Murad Boudjellad, or he wanted wins straight away. So we bring uh, the Johnny Wilkinson, we bring great players, but also I sign guys like uh, Mathieu Bastaro, like Tius Board. And I was not agree with him about, I say all the time, you need one maybe great player, but you need a French player. Plus I invest a lot in 12 young player came from our academy and started to play. But the problem is the French Federation lost the control now because the French league is so much money with Canal Plus and everything. And, and the French team is not the priority anymore in the French rugby. Realize that Guinoves in June, he will go in tour in summer in Argentina without the best French player of the four team in semi-final. So the semi-final and final will carry on and the players stay with the club. So the Guinoves will go in Argentina without the French player of the four best team in France. It's completely crazy. Okay, let me bring in our Irish contributors. Uh, Paul Wallace, how much sympathy would you have for Salip Saint-André here saying that he was unable to pick the best players over the last four years because of the structure of French rugby? Yeah, well, I'd, I'd be very sympathetic in uh, the case of Toulon, of course, because uh, you were, it was a new team coming up to the divisions and uh, where the likes of Toulouse, I guess, would have um, had a, a fair catchment of the, the star quality in France. Um, you know, to be able to compete, you, you had to go outside uh, to, to compete with those big big clubs like the Clermont as well that were already well settled as the premier teams in France. 
so yeah I can see that yeah and uh, yeah from I suppose the feedback we'd get as well from some international players it might be that um, you know some of the younger players probably at the club level aren't training up to the uh, the, 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 the requirements or maybe, maybe more training like the, the older set that are coming in maybe former old blacks who might be at 35 looking to slow down in their career and uh, um, that, that would have been one of the things that would have would have come through I guess Okay, Neil Francis, what do you make of the current state of French rugby, particularly going into the game tomorrow? We have such an outstanding record in recent years, but we don't win that often in Paris. It was 1972, 2000, 2014 are the only wins for the Irish team in Paris, almost in living memory. Mm. I think the French have have realised the problem and they've implemented the the GIF quotas, J-I-F-F. So uh, I, I think it's now 14 of your starting squad have to be French qualified. Um, and I think from next year, I think it's 16 out of your 23. So they realise that the, what Philippe is saying is correct, that uh, there are too many foreign-based players. So they realise that. And international rugby is where all the revenue streams come from. Maybe not so much in, in France, but certainly in England and, and in the home or in the rest of the, the Six Nations. So I think you'll see France will come back uh, at this stage, uh, as they get more of their players uh, playing in in in, in solid competition, uh, in terms of what's happening tomorrow, um, I think uh, I think Ireland, I think Ireland, despite what I said last week, have a have a pretty good chance. Uh, this French team is still kind of finding itself. They're still familiar faces, but I think uh, Noves has gone for a he's gone for a supersized pack, and and we watched. Um, Last uh, the last time they played in in in, uh, in the Aviva, you know they had these ma- just a massive massive pack and it, it didn't work. You know they just didn't uh, they didn't get enough purchase in the game and they weren't weren't good enough to support their back. So I think that situation pertains tomorrow. Uh, they have an absolutely enormous pack and conventional wisdom says that you run them around the park, but I'm not sure if we are good enough. I just think there are too many guys there, McCarthy and, and White, who are in their mid, mid-30s mid and who aren't the strongest players there. So if you try and play a game where you move that French pack around, it might come back to, to bite you in the backside. Um, I think Joe Smith realises he's going to have to score. I think if Ireland are to win tomorrow, they're going to have to collate somewhere in the region of about 20 points. And, and that's what they did the last time they were there. They scored 22 points had to score three tries and Sexton played really, really well. He scored two good tries and Trimble scored a try. So I think that's what they're going to have to do and they're going to have to play to do that. Um, so I, I think the two the two areas, I, I think we have a real a real strength now in our mid-five. Our half-backs played very, very well against Wales and I think our back row played very well and outplayed the Welsh back row. I think the same situation will happen. I think uh, you know the French back row is a big, strong, powerful unit, but I just think on the ground they're trying to play the ball out of the hand. I don't think that's going to work. I think Ireland will mop up on the floor, and I think so <clears throat> we can control this game. So it will come down to front three and back three, and I think France, yet again, I've just picked some Bobby Dazzlers, as I want to call them. I mean, I thought Noah Nakatachi now was, uh, if he picked him, I, I, co- I couldn't understand why he picked him. He was a very good offensive player, but a defensive liability. And I think Teddy Tama as well, they've picked Tama for, for tomorrow. And they're great players going forward. And the, the same with uh, Vakatawa. I mean, they're great players going forward. But I just think Joe Smith is just looking at these two and sort of saying, all right, these guys are going to be dangerous with the ball in hand and they're offensively they're going to be very strong. But we can take advantage of these guys okay. any, any which way we can. And that's going to be the, the key to the game. OK, before I go back to Philippe, Paul Wallace, there's been a lot of criticism of Joe Schmidt not having enough of an attacking game plan. We heard Matt Williams on the programme last night complaining about that. Do you expect any changing tactics tomorrow or will the circumstances of being in Paris suggest that Joe Schmidt would be conservative in his approach? I think he'd be conservative. Uh, I think he will look at getting the tempo up, uh, as Fana was saying there. It is a big pack. Um, not not as big as packs uh, of old, but certainly the size of Maustri and Antonio in particular. And I think the tempo is a big thing. You look at Owen Redden coming in on the bench and Madigan as well for later in the game. Uh, so you've got some good impact players and uh, you know the, some of the French club rugby can be a bit of 
a slugfest. Uh, so getting that tempo up, as New Zealand showed as well, uh, can that get these guys sort of uh, basically uncomfortable in defence. I think the, the most important thing, though, uh, playing against France, is not leaving France get front football. I think with a young side like this, if they do, uh, the confidence grows, the crowd gets behind them, uh, and then it could be a long afternoon. But if the defence is it, it has the same energy and physicality as it had against Wales, then I think Ireland in a very good position to win this. I think France uh, are probably going to target the scrum. I think Poirot coming in as well is going to go at Nathan White, but uh, in, in a very different way. I think people um, you know, wrote off Nathan White as having a very bad scrummaging game, where in fact I think it was Jerome Garcia at the bad game in that Wales were walking around the scrum. I wouldn't expect France to do that. They'll try and go straight through, and I would hope that the, the Ireland scrum will um, fare a lot better in keeping the angles, uh, angles right. If they, if they can do that, and I, I also the line out if they can put pressure on the throw because I think the French mall will be another go forward because they don't have the pick the Bastros, the guys who are guaranteed to get you across the gain line. Um, they do have Dante in, who for me is a real danger man, and the matchup I think with him and Henshaw will be very, very important as well because if you can think back of uh, all the Irish games and French games that were very close, it's generally been a Josian, a trial, a, a Rougerie, a Bastero who just shrugs off a tackle in midfield and that's the turning points of the game. I don't think France have the ability to, to do that to, to help muscle us in that area. Um, I think if they do, Dante will be the man that will create havoc. OK, I want to come finish with our special guest here in studio, Philippe Saint-André. You've had three occasions up against Joe Schmidt. As I referred to earlier, there's been some criticism of him in this country, despite all of the success that he's had in winning the Six Nations, about not having enough of an attacking game plan. Now, what's your assessment of the way Joe Schmidt gets this Irish team to play? Do you know when you are when you coach a country, uh, it's all, all the time a lot of criticism. But uh, I think you must be glad to have uh, this coach because he brings you so much success for the last uh, four years. Uh, you you were number three in the world. I think it never happened in the Irish rugby. But after you know you have all the time people unhappy. You lost. You are unhappy. You win, you are unhappy. People <laughs> expect you beat the other team by 50 points. Do you know, international level, no. It's very, very high and it's very tough. Because me, I remember uh, your last win in Stade de France. Uh, uh, I have a young kid uh, come on and he have a penalty to kick 22 meters in front of the post. If he passes this kick, we finish f- number one in the Six Nations. We miss this kick. You won the Six Nations and us, we finished fourth. So between winning and losing is so small, small margin. So I think just you must be so proud about your your team, about your your players, about your system. Because, do you know, when, uh, when rugby started to be professional in ni- 1995, everybody said, oh, France and England will win the Six Nations each year. And for the last eight, nine years, it's more Wales and Ireland won the Six Nations than France or England. So I think you must be glad about your system, about our organization. And I think you optimize 100% your potential. But Neil Francis and Paul Wallace seem reasonably optimistic that Ireland can win tomorrow. What's your call? Who will win the match in Paris? I am French, so I, 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 I back up the French team. I think the French team will target the scrum, but you know, in international rugby, it's less and less scrum. And after I, I, I am agree with uh, uh, with the two guys because they know well the rugby. If if the French team started to have the ball and go forwards. It's a young team, so they need confidence. But after, if Ireland keeps the ball, I think we will be struggling if Ireland have a, have a lot of ball in hands. I just need to finish by mentioning you're in Dublin today because you've become involved with a new Irish-based high-performance sports business called PSAacademies.com. You're involved with Graham Ross and Ian Lewis and the former Munster player, Johnny Murphy. Now, what's involved in this? What are you doing here? It's involved and, uh, you know, uh, after 18 years of coaching professional players, uh, I feel that uh, I won't be involved with young players about skills, about uh, the, sp- the spirit of the game and uh, about uh, respect, uh, referee, uh, high, perform- high performance. So I, I, I opened a PSA Academy with, yeah, with John Murphy 
And uh, I am here just to speak about this and to bring young players from 10 to 18. In Tigne, you know, we have a fantastic facility with pitch, with a lot of activity, and they will have fun, but also they, they, will, they will improve about, uh, about rugby and about skills. PSAacademies.com is the website. Philippe Saint-André, thank you very much for joining us on the programme. Neil, Neil Francis and Paul Wallace as well. And of course, we'll talk on Monday about the outcome of this match. Coming up next, Mark Lawrence and Tony Cascarino look forward to the weekend's football action.